Okay, I thought I'd show you um, a new device I've picked up. It's the Syrup Genie Mini. This is the box that it comes in. And it's a, a compact panning motion control system. Um, this is the device itself. It's not a huge amount to see in the box. Basically some basic instructions, a cloth, and a couple of cables. So let's get that out of the way. Cables you get are your USB charging cable, as you'd expect. And then you get your shutter release cable. And you have to choose the correct shutter release cable for your camera, Canon or Sony, what have you. I'm mostly using the Panasonic GH4, so I've got the Panasonic um, shutter release cable. Anyway, let's get that out of the way. Let's have a look at the device itself. Pretty simple. Cork on the top, cork on the bottom, tripod mount, tripod mount with also a thread adapter to go between the um, quarter or a three eighth size uh, tripod. Uh, one button, a port for your power charging, port for your shutter release cable, and then a port, a serial port, which is when you've got more than one of these devices or you've got the Syrup Genie, the big larger device from Syrup, then you can add tilt and pan and add devices together so they can talk to each other and do more sort of dynamic time lapses and video pans. Um, I've only got this one device, so uh, I can't use that port there. Anyway, so quite straightforward. It's um, not a huge amount to it. It's not too heavy, but it feels fairly solid. It's got a rubberized finish on the outside here, but don't let that fool you. It doesn't, it's not uh, water resistant, so you can't leave this out in the rain um, or snow or what, what have you for a long period because it will get damaged by the water. Um, but, you know, bear that in mind. Anyway, so I've been using this device for a couple of weeks now for doing various different time lapses and uh, video pans. Um, and I th so I think I've got a good idea of, you know, the pros and cons, the good stuff and the bad stuff. And I've got lots of different examples to show you of, you know, different ways of using it. So I thought the best way to show you how to use this is just to set up a simple uh, video pan. So let's stick our GH4 on. Obviously for a video pan you don't need the shutter release, you can just use the um, use your uh, camera, let's get all this focused good, uh, you can use, you know, use your camera um, start stop record button um, so you don't need the shutter release basically. Um, and let's launch the our app, get everything kind of placed so you can see what the hell I'm doing. So first of all you're presented with um, settings and then time lapse or video options. Um, firstly, obviously, you do need to connect it, so let's press the Bluetooth tooth button. That will flash a couple of times, and then until it connects, then when it connects, it's solid green down here. Um, that shows the battery on the device itself, um, and big green tick to show that you're connected. Uh, we'll quickly point out, it's worth, in the settings, make sure you set your frame rate. I'm at 25 because I'm in PAL, but make sure you set your frame rate up correctly, otherwise it won't be doing the maths right when it's working out your, your time-lapse durations and that kind of thing. So, um, let's pretend we want to do a video shot, and let's pretend our little action figures over here are actors. We've got uh, Harrison Ford and Peter Mayhew, and Peter Dinklage have all stepped in to help us out on this. That was nice of them, wasn't it? <laughs> and so a new video. Uh, there is a couple of presets for the video, but they're basically slow, medium, fast, so, you know, they're pretty basic. So let's go into a manual setup of a, a video shot. So, first of all, you'll be presented with these um, little dots. Green dot on the outside is your start position, blue dot on the outside. I know they look quite similar colours, but um, that's your end position. There's a little arrow there showing you which way it's going. And then this, you can also manually sort of put the camera where you want it and you'll see a little grey icon, camera icon, sort of racing to join your green icon, which is where you're telling it to go. So let's set up our start position to be on Harrison Ford and Peter Mayhew, aka Chewbacca and Han Solo. Let's tilt that so you can see what I'm doing slightly, and then uh, we'll check the focus. Always check your focus, guys. Um, he says that, probably not focusing the main camera. Anyway, um, so let's have that as our start position, and then let's do a very small pan over to Peter Dinklage here from Game of Thrones. And that's our end position. And then we'll say, drag that end position back. So that's our very small little pan. It's only a 16 degree pan. Um, let's have a nice, slow, leisurely 12 second pan from point A to point B. 
in the speed in the playtime. Sorry, you can also choose, go in and choose the speed directly. Uh, that will obviously affect your playtime. Um, and then we have the, our mode. Let's do a single take, one pan, which is repeat off basically. So it's just from left to right, basic shot. Let's start recording on our GH4, and then press record on our Sir Genie. And off it goes. So that's going to take uh, 12 seconds to get from Harrison Ford over to Peter Dinklage there. And then it should come to a nice, gentle halt. There we go. And it's telling us it's finished. So that's a basic setup of a, um, a video pan. Um, there's some other options in here. As you might have noticed, it didn't just sort of stop like, you know, like a clunk. It has a bit of an ease in and ease out option. You can go in and fine tune that and make it two seconds or three seconds. I'll leave it at one second for these quick tests. Um, in the modes we have repeat, uh, continuous, so just keep on doing it. Um, repeat off, I'm trying to get to bounce, there you go, and then also bounce. We'll do a quick test with bounce as well. So bounce basically just goes backwards and forwards between the two positions um, and then forever. Uh, and, that ha and that's different from repeat because repeat is basically going to be doing the move the main move once at the speed you told it to and it's going to go quickly back to the start so yeah let's leave it on bounce and then one thing i want to talk about a little bit more is the that ease in and ease out at the end so let's speed this one up so let's go four four seconds between end. so it's going to go a lot quicker this time and then let's return the camera back to its start position and then press record. There it goes. So that's going to take four seconds between left of cam to right of cam. I'll leave that going there a little bit. So as you maybe have to be picking up straight away, the the ease in and the ease out. I'm not totally happy with the way that works. It has a bit of a lurch at the at the very end and at the beginning of each pan. Um, it's not horrendous, but I don't think it's. Um, you know, the gears are sort of fine enough for the ease in and ease out from a resting position to be sm that smooth enough, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think during the middle of the pan, it's pretty smooth and pretty nice. Um, and I'm, I'm finding this in the time lapse as well, by the way, it's not just a video thing. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you that because that's one of my main niggles with it. I think generally the, the, the device itself is great, but that's one of my main main niggles is that the very start of the pan and the very end of the pan isn't super, super smooth. It is a little bit lurchy, regardless of what you set that uh, ease in and ease out to. It's, it's the very start of the movement it has a bit of an issue with. Anyway, let's, um, let's stop that and stop recording on the GH4 as well. Um, so there you go, that's the sort of, uh, it gives you a good idea um, of setting up a video. I'll quickly show you uh, a setup for a time lapse, I won't do one now, but I'll quickly set up what you want to be doing. So first of all, we want to set your camera to um, manual photo mode, you know, not video mode for this. You want to put that end of the cable with the right, the right angled um, connector into the camera and then the straight end into the your syrup. Obviously you want to set your camera up with your focus and your shutter speed and all the rest of it how you want it. We'll leave it like that for now. And then if we quickly um, show you a couple of time lapse options. So slightly more to the time lapse. I think this device is primarily for time lapse, not so much for video pans, but it's obviously nice that it can do it as well. Um, so the, it all looks pretty much the same. There's just, just a few extra options. So obviously we've got our interval now, so we can choose, say if we wanted to, if we want, if we want to know for certain that we want five seconds in between shots, then we can set that up first and then work the other numbers from that if you wanted to. Um, so let's say we want our play time to be uh, 20, say at 20 second play time, and then we want our record time to be, um, let's say, of course, everything, as I'm changing this, everything else is, uh, is being affected. So now we've set our record time up. 
let's just put that to an exact four hours. That's changed everything else. So you need to kind of work out <clears throat> what you want to prioritize, be it record time, like how long do you want to sit there waiting for it? How long do you want the thing to play back for? Or what you want your interval to be? So you have to obviously set your priorities up and then get it all right. But let's just for the sake of argument, let's say four hour record time, a playback time of 20 seconds, that means it's worked out our interval needs to be 28.8 seconds between shots. So let's just say that's what we want. We've got the same um, ease in and ease out options that we had with the video. We've also got HDR options, so it can you can have your bracketed your camera set up for bracketed um, you know shots, one exposure low, one exposure in the middle, one exposure high. Um, you can set all that up in here, obviously. Um, movement type, this is pretty important. So we have your move shoot move. So if you've got an op uh, an open shutter for you know more than like a twenty fifth of a second, if you want these sort of nighttime uh, time lapses with all the traffic nice and blurred out and all the landscape to be perfectly you know, not to blur it out, then you need your move, shoot, move for um, for that kind of um, time lapse. Or a continuous move is more for something if you're, say if you've got a GoPro on there and you don't have shutter release control, then you, you just want continuous movement because there's no point the, this device starting and then stopping and then starting and then stopping because you can't sync the two up anyway. So for most professional stuff, you're gonna to wanna to use move, shoot, move, basically. Also you have a, a your, move shoot delay so if you want to fine tune that so that there's a bit of a pause between it stopping moving and then it you taking the photograph or if you want to speed that up so if you're really trying to fit in a lot of frames into a small amount of time you might want to speed that right up so that it takes the shot immediately after um, stopping moving and then you can save your preset as well so that's um, the gist of your um, Let's just get it back to a starting point over here. That's the sort of, you know, a rough idea of how to set up a time lapse. Hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the features. Um, and then obviously once you press record, I won't do it now, but it will just start taking the shots. So this will take a shot every 28 seconds, 29 seconds, and it will keep going for four hours. And at the end of that, it's going to give you a 20 second uh, clip. And that's how that works, basically. Um, so. There you go, you get an idea of video pans and, and time lapse. Um, I think I've shown you most of the what the app can do and how it works. Uh, I'll quickly talk about positive and negative things. Um, negative things, my first bugbear is I've had a lot of crashes with the application, mostly through using video pans, not so much when I've been setting up uh, time lapse pans. Um, and when I say crash, it completely crashes and it freezes the phone for a few seconds. So pretty annoying. Also, if you've taken quite a few minutes setting up a, a time lapse shot, you know, getting your endpoint perfect and you've worked all the maths out and all that, uh, and then it crashes and you lose all that information unless you've happened to have saved your preset, which you probably haven't, let's face it. Um, I've I spoke to Syrup and they've told me that they are aware of this and they're looking into it and they're trying to get that sorted out. So hopefully an update on the the app will fix that entirely. I mean, obviously I'm using an iPhone 6 Plus app here, which is a pretty recent device. It's not the latest version, but it's the version before the latest version. It's only a few months old. So my phone should easily be able to uh, handle it. I've also tried um, using using the Syrup app on the um, iPad as well, but my iPad's quite old and it, I couldn't get it to work at all on my older iPad, just to give you a heads up. Um, so that's my first bugbear, is that um, that crashing of the app. Um, first of all, I thought it was to do with uh, my device getting too far away from this device so that the Bluetooth connection was sort of freezing and crashing it. But even when I'm holding it right next to it, occasionally when I'm doing video, when I'm setting up a video shot, it will just completely freeze and I have to not restart my phone, but I have to force quit the application and then start it up again. And then obviously a few seconds pass. Um, it's not a huge big deal, but if you're trying to get a lot of shots in a hurry and you're using this a lot to get your shots, it would drive you up the wall. So hopefully they sort that out. So that's my bugbear number one. My other issue, niggle, is that the start of the movement and the end of the movement, um, it's not horrendous and sometimes, occasionally, it does seem to do a perfect job of it, but it's... I think about 80% of the time, at the very start of the movement and the very end of the movement, feels a bit lurchy and a bit jerky. 
Um, in the middle of the pan, like I said before, it seems pretty smooth and pretty, um, you know, continuous speed, basically. Um, so, you know, it's possible I've got a slight um, dodgy unit here. I am going to contact Syrup about this and give them some more information and I'll share my review with them as well. And if they replace my um, my device and the new device is perfect, then I will definitely put that in the comments down below so that just to give you an update. Um, you know, if, if, if I've got a slightly iffy unit, then I'll, I'll chalk that up to um, just bad luck and I'll, I'll let you know in the comments down below. Anyway, so there you guys, that's the, um, the Syrup Genie Mini. Um, I think it's, you know, in my opinion, I think it's a bit overpriced. Um, if everything worked perfectly, I think I'd, I, it, that would sit with me a little bit better. It is, a, it is a decent device. It's got, you know, they've put a lot of work into making this app work really well, apart from the crashes. Um, you know, the actual, the way it works is great. There's a couple of minor things they, they could do with adding. For instance, um, that you should be able to press a button to flip your beginning and end positions easily. Like right now, if I want to change the beginning and the end, I need to move the end over there and then bring the, bring, bring, drag the beginning back over there. I can change counterclockwise to clockwise, but that keeps the start position the same point. My point being is you've just done a lovely pan and you want to keep everything exactly the same and go back the other way. You pretty much have to like make a note of these your degrees in terms of the number, jot them down, and then reset it all up. Whereas if there was just a button a button over here that did flip beginning and end, that would make life a lot easier for certain situations where you want to repeat the thing but going backwards. Obviously, you can go into um, you know bounce mode and and do one like that, but um, you know. It's just something I think they could add quite easily. So yeah, if they sorted out the the crashes and if they sorted out the um, uh, the beginning and the end of the pans, so it was less jerky, then I think it would be you know nine out of ten. As it is, with those couple of issues, um, I think you really you're going to really want this device in order to spend two hundred and fifty bucks on it. Um, so I'm giving it about a six or a seven out of ten in terms of my satisfaction with the product so far um, but anyway I'll stop waffling I hopefully I've given you enough information to get a good idea of what this device can do um, I don't want to be too negative I, I think I've got some great results out of it so far uh, I think as long as you accept its limitations you don't and you don't um, you don't expect the very start of the pan the very end of the pan to be part of your shot then I think it can do a great job um, and like I say, for time lapse, I've I think maybe maybe only once it's crashed setting up a time lapse. It's only been when I've been setting up video shots. So if you're buying it primarily for time lapse for nighttime stars and you know all that kind of stuff, you know it has the move shoot move, so it does give you a full control uh, shutter release time lapse, um, much better than you know a cheaper device that doesn't have shut your proper shutter control. Um, so you know, I, I I can see a lot of people being pretty happy with this as long as you understand its limitations. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's that. I'm also going to try a few other various ways of using it because we could attach this, obviously put this onto a slider, and then um, you could move you could move the slider by hand while this thing was panning at the same time. So you could probably get some quite interesting dynamic shots like that. You don't necessarily need the Syrup Genie, the main unit, you don't need two sort of units to uh, to get those sort of more dynamic um, pans with more going on. So there is other sort of more clever crafty ways you could use this and I will be experimenting with that. Um, but anyway, like I say, a bunch of examples of what I've done so far all coming up um, and yeah, I hope that review and that product overlook was pretty useful. I shall leave it there. Thanks guys.